So, this morning, you're not going to listen to me preach. We're doing something a little special this morning. We have some special Christmas, Christmas ornaments on our tree. And we will now have some wonderful people who made them come up and explain it all to us. These new ornaments are beautiful. They're different than any ornaments I've ever seen. These ornaments are called Christmas. They are all Christian symbols that give honor to Christ. Why are they called Christmas? Christmas actually come from two words, Christ and monogram. A Christmas is just that, a monogram of Christ. What's a monogram? Have you ever put your initials on something you own, like a book or a jacket? <coughs> I have. My initials are K-E, and that stands for Katie Ivan. Well, that's what a monogram is. If we made a monogram for Jesus today, we might write J-C to stand for Jesus Christ. But in Jesus' time, they didn't write in English, they wrote in Greek. Some of the ornaments on the tree are like Greek initials for the words for Jesus and Christ and so on. But not all ornaments on the tree are letters. You are absolutely right. Sometimes we remember things better when we see a picture or a symbol. From the earliest times, people drew different pictures and symbols to help explain what they believed about God. In fact, many of these symbols were designed almost 2,000 years ago by the first Christians. They put them on their door, they put them on their doorposts, utensils, and catacombs to make a statement about what they believe. Many have remained until today, and you see them now as Christmas on our tree. <coughs> I see. So they all point to God and tell something about Him. We can learn more about Him just by studying His ornaments. But why are they only white and gold? White is the liturgical color for Christmas. It refer refers to the Lord's purity and perfection. Several scriptural references describe God with the color white. As Jesus transfigurations, his clothes become dazzling white. In the book of Revelation, it says Jesus will appear on a great white throne, appearing white like wool and snow. What about the gold? Gold refers to God's glory and majesty. God instructed that much of his temple is overlaid with gold. Heaven is described as having streets of gold, and Jesus is described as wearing a golden sash when he appears in all his glory. I'd like to learn about what all these symbols mean. Me too, may we? Yes, of course. When we do, we can give glory to God. And that's the real reason for celebrating Christmas. <coughs> the Holy Trinity. Within the Christian teachings, Holy Trinity is worshipped through a number of rituals. Worship and praise are offered to God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Blessings and baptisms are given in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Prayers are given to three in one. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Trinity also expresses the way Christians relate to God, worshiping the Father, following the examples given by the Son, and acknowledging the Holy Spirit that lives in each and every one of us. The lamp and the candle signifying the word. God's holy word is depicted in, depicted in several ways. Many times it is symbolized with an open book. Sometimes it is also symbolized by a lamp. This symbolism stems from the words of Psalm 119, verse 105, which says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light for my path. The candle also symbolizes the word as it lights our way and shows us the truth. The fish as a symbol in Christianity is nearly as old as the Christian faith itself. The sign is seen in the past on things like art and ag architects, architecture, and today it endures on things like bumper stickers and business cards as a sign of Christian faith. The Greek word for fish is this word as an acrostic for 
I is Jesus, C is Christ, TH is God's new Son, S is Savior, meaning Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. The symbol consists of two interesting arcs, the ends of the right side extending beyond the main point so as to resemble the profile of a fish. Now we know this as the Jesus fish. <coughs> now we all look at several symbols that especially remind us of Christmas. When it was time for Jesus to be born, God sent the angel Gabriel to tell Mary that she would be the mother of Jesus. We are also reminded of the angels who told the shepherd about the birth of Jesus. The nativity star, or the star of Bethlehem, also called the Christmas star, revealed the birth of Jesus to the biblical Magi, and later led them to Bethlehem, according to the Christian tradition. The star appears only in the nativity story of the Gospel of Matthew, where astrologers from the East were inspired to excuse me, inspired by the star to travel to Jerusalem. Many Christians see the star as a miraculous sign to mark the birth of the Christ. Some theologians claim that the star fulfilled a prophecy, known as the star prophecy. Today we sit, we see it, and think of the miraculous birth of Jesus. The Cairo. The Cairo is one of the earliest forms of Christogram and it is used by some Christians. It is formed by intersecting the first two capital letters of Pi, the X, and the Rho, which is the key, of the Greek word Christus, meaning Christ, in such a way to produce the man monogram. Although not technically a Christian cross, the Cairo invokes the authority of Jesus, as well as symbolizing his status as the Jewish Messiah that we all call Christ. The heart. The devotion to the heart or the sacred heart is one of the most widely practiced and well-known Roman Catholic devotion. Taking Jesus Christ's physical heart as a representation of his divine love for humanity. This devotion is especially concerned with what the church deemed to be the love and compassion of the heart of Christ toward humanity and its long suffering. All in all, we look to the heart to remember that God is love. The anchor. As the sign rings from on high, his body, the church, labors here below. Just as the candle symbolizes the prophet's hope, an anchor symbolizes the hope of the church. Hebrews 6 reminds us, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. A boat anchor below the water, though visible, secures the position of the ship, and thereby protects the passengers. Our anchor of hope connects us to the Holy of Holies in heaven, the divine worship space in which Christ acts as high priest, offering his obedient self as the guarantee of our new baptism of life. Praying hands symbolize obedience, submission, sincerity, repentance, veneration, and respect in regard to one's higher power. The exact meaning of praying hands varies depending on which religious tradition is considered. The physical ritual of putting one's hands together in prayer can help calm a busy mind to focus on the higher power. The shell. Voluntarily receiving the sacrament of baptism, of repentance, and rededication to the purposes of God. The shell in many Christian traditions is used to pour water over the head of a Christian convert, and so reminds us of Jesus' baptism long ago. On our tree, it is a symbol of repentance as we redirect our lives in the season of preparation. The chalice. The chalice has long been a single symbol of the Christian church. It symbolizes the glass from which Jesus Christ drank with his disciples during the Last Supper. It is also viewed as a symbol of Christ's power to redeem humankind. Many times we see this symbol with a communion wafer rising from the cup. 
When we see this image, we remember the words Jesus said. Take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. The cross and the five-pointed star. The cross is the most common of all the Christian images that we see in our world today. It is on the cross that Jesus was crucified. The cross is recognized throughout the world by those who confess to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, who died for them on the cross. The five-pointed star is meant to represent the five wounds of Jesus on the cross. The five wounds being Jesus' hands, feet, and side. When we look at this star, we should remind ourselves of the sacrifice Jesus made for us. But Fleure Cross. This is the cross Fleure, which is French for flowery. It, its ends resemble the petals of a flower. It is a beautiful form of the cross, embellished for use in many church decorations. Sometimes we make the cross beautiful because of the beautiful way God showed his love for us by his death on the cross. The butterfly. A butterfly, a modern symbol for Jesus, will also grace our tree. Locked in a cocoon during its transitional stage, the butterfly is hidden from view, appearing ugly and uninteresting to the passerby. The miracle of transformation, however, continues to fascinate us. Adult and child alike. Jesus rising on Easter is accompanied by angels, just as his birth was, and those who discover it are greeted with the same words addressed to Mary and Joseph, do not be afraid. The dove. When Jesus ascended into heaven as our resurrected king, he did not leave us alone. He sent the Holy Spirit to live in our hearts and guide us in our faith and life. The most common symbol for the Holy Spirit is the dove. This symbol originated from Jesus' baptism and when the Holy Spirit descended upon him as a dove. The crown. After dwelling with his followers for 50 amazing days, Jesus ascends and assumes his place at the right hand of the Father. The crown on our tree reminds us that Christ is king and though absent from the world for a season, his reign continues in our lives and churches. Monarchs may be few and far between in the modern world, but ours is ever present. <clears throat> Let us give these ladies a round of applause for the work that they did in creating this Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. And Marla brought this to us and we thank you for that. 